The rising Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns tandem has shockingly fueled Minnesota to the number one seed in the West. Against the Pels, Cat joined reigning finals MVP Nikola Jokic as one of two players over the last 40 years with a stat line of 25 plus points, 5 plus boards, 5 plus dimes, 0 turnovers, and 90 plus percent shooting. Towns doesn't get enough respect for being the center position's all-time leader in three-pointers made, while having significantly less games under his belt than anyone ranked in the top five. The first overall pick out of Kentucky back in 2015 missed the playoffs in five of his first six pro campaigns, but with Edwards as his number two option in 2022, who then developed into the first option last year, Ants and Cat have led Minnesota to consecutive playoff appearances entering 23-24. Many were skeptical of the Wolves forming a massive front court with Towns playing the tall ball four and former DPOY Rudy Gobert at the five when they traded for the Frenchman last summer. A year later, and the Wolves have conversely this season forced opponents to adjust to their size. If they can sustain winning habits, they have the chance to transcend the current small ball era. Stick around for the key to the Wolves' chemistry keeping up, whether or not their start's a fluke, and a lot more. But just 9.8% of you watching are subscribed, so if you're a Hoop fan, make sure you hit subscribe. Under coach Chris Finch for the third season, Minnesota continues to get progressively better defensively. They were number 13 in 21-22 defensive rating, number 10 the next year, and this season they've catapulted to number 3 in that category. While they've established a defensive identity this year, the Wolves are still bottom 7 in offensive rating, which leads you to believe there's room for improvement. Scary, considering they lead the conference despite that lack of bucket getting. That said, if Finch's system can produce more well-rounded showings from Cat like he just had in the Big Easy, the Wolves' offensive efficiency would vamp significantly and make them that much more deadly for the opposition. In New Orleans, Towns displayed that he can be a top playmaking center in the flow of a well-orchestrated offense. Out of this floppy action where Edwards gets the McDaniel swing, a give-and-go with Towns netting the assist sets up an executed handoff screening action with Edwards draining the baseline J. Elite entry pass from Ant right here avoids the reverse seal of Herb Jones, forcing Valanchunas to rotate and leaving Gobert open in the dunker spot where Cat intelligently extends over Jonas before letting go of the 4-5 lob to Rudy. High drop step on the skinnier Dyson Daniels is followed by Towns elevating into his layup to draw the Valanchunas rotation before Towns wraps around a mid-air left-handed dime for the Edwards right corner triple. The early facilitating from Towns allowed him to get one-on-one -on -one with defenders and opened up space for him to muscle his way inside. Again, a high drop step sheds a pelican like my career on pro difficulty, and Zeller's hesitant to jump for the block with the threat of another elusive pass. Showing off the scoring versatility, Carl then goes to a line drive fast break attack and a mid-range Dirk fader from the foul line before getting right back to the post. While already working on one of the game's best wing defenders in Herb Jones, a double by Jordan Hawkins sees Towns turn baseline in the other direction of the trap with a nasty contested fader. The all-time great center three-point shooting factored in to kick off the final 24 minutes, but after a couple triples, Carl got right back to dishing it, curl cutting to the elbow for the Milton entry and spotting Conley for an overhead kick to the corner, then baiting Herb Jones with an up fake followed by a lefty attack and thread the needle lob to go bare. The evolving chemistry, floor space, and trust between Minnesota's duo of the future then began to take over. Towns would set up Edwards with three dimes, the last of which out of this pistol action with Gobert setting the flare, then Towns up faking and swinging it. Same pistol action sees Ant return the favor to Cat with a dime of his own, but after Edwards fouled out, and with the Wolves down one in the dying seconds, Finch intelligently ran a clear out where Towns goes to an inverted jab step before surprising Daniels with an attack to his offhand and has all the time in the world with his combination of speed and strength to go back to his right and one-legged floated off the glass for the win. The Wolves did take a road L to Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns before that New Orleans matchup, but prior to that Phoenix loss, racked up consecutive wins over Golden State. To be fair, that's not saying much right now, given their rising West counterpart in OKC, who we could talk about in a separate video, just did the same thing. But in one of those dubs over the dubs, a member of their coaching staff still had the focus to tear up his players at half, even when leading by four. According to Edwards, 
Assistant Elson Turner cussed out the team at half, which is the type of accountability that's going to keep this Minneapolis ship chugging. Another key factor behind the success for the Timberwolves sustaining itself is Rudy Gobert staying composed mentally by using his experience of leading a number one seed in Utah properly all throughout both the rest of the regular season and into the playoffs. That'll be a major key to the Wolves keeping their chemistry intact, fueling the Wolves to a top three defensive rating by being the elite backside rim protector that he's always been is a good start as Rudy's fourth in swatted shots just behind Victor Wembenyama as of this recording. But can Gobert maintain this type of winning impact over the course of the 82 game grind and into the playoffs? That's my question. He's always been attacked in the pick and roll come the playoffs and been killed by quicker units that he's not versatile enough to adapt to. On the offensive end, his lack of spacing can be detrimental. However, optimistically speaking, reason Minnesota's start likely isn't a fluke is that you can get a lot more off the bench from the likes of Shake Milton and Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Also off the pine, while a coveted free agent who they re-signed and Nas Reed is leading the team in three-point percentage at 43.1%, I think he's capable of giving you more like 17 to 20 points per game as opposed to the just under 13 he's currently giving you. Additionally, there's untapped potential for 23-year-old lockdown defender Jaden McDaniels, as you'll likely see Jaden's scoring increase as he develops throughout the year. Can't forget about Mike Conley, who's still serviceable at age 36, leading the Wolves in assists per game. Also, through 12 games, Conley's albeit decent 10.5 points per night have been produced on a ridiculous 50-42-100 shooting split. As the sharpshooting QB directing traffic at the point of attack, 2007's fourth overall pick out of Ohio State has been definitively steady for Minnesota. And speaking to Conley's class, last year, Mike won the NBA Sportsmanship of the Year award. I know another player who could learn from his composure, but I want to know who's the most underrated player on Minnesota in your opinion. Best answer down below in the comments section earns next video shout out, and the top five commenters by the end of the year earn free merch of their choosing. So leave your take on today's question to Compete Community Speaks. Shout out to Mike Woodward, who says MVP is a highly narrative driven award, and I think the Celtics are going to be the talk of the NBA all season. This will be a classic case of the team getting over the hump, and Tatum will be the de facto MVP if they have a 65 plus win season. His biggest advantage over Jokic slash Embiid slash Curry is voter fatigue, but secondly is his defense. He's much more impactful on that end than Jokic slash Curry, and Embiid likely won't win back to back unless the Sixers end up the number one seed in dominant fashion, which he admitted himself they aren't the best team. It's unfair, but Embiid will lose some regular season MVP viability due to past playoff success as well. It feels like the stars are aligning for a Tatum MVP this season. Unbelievable take right there. Appreciate every answer. Deflo signing off.